Ricky de Guzman is why come along brother he has done something very special and uh, you ready he has got a guitar uh, that's not an ordinary guitar this is brother Chuck Humphrey's guitar yeah and he plays and brings his own but of course and Miss Wilma brought this one last week and she asked him to play it so he's been in there tuning it so he's gonna play brother Chuck Humphrey's his guitar today some of y'all remember brother Chuck come along brother and uh you can sing and show you video, however you want to do it. But he's doing a great work. A Mountain View Independent Baptist Church in San Jose. San Jose. Thank you. Tarlac. I want to say Tarlac City, but it's San Jose, Philippines. God bless you, brother. Thank you, sir. Well, good morning. <clears throat> good to be back here after four years. Uh, just like what Pastor Tad said, when he and Brother Rex came to our country, our our spirit just bonded together, you know. And uh, seems like uh, we are twins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, one year older than him, but uh, I look like uh, he's older than me. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Uh, again, I'm Brother Ricky. It's my, uh, my ex-girlfriend, Erlinda, my wife, Beth, and our youngest daughter, Generous. I have three kids, and uh, their names are Gracious, Glorious, and Generous. And uh, the other two were in the Philippines, and uh, uh, we, we miss them, yes, and... But uh, anyway, we have our baby here yeah, with so us, yeah, and uh, we have a dog. <laughs> His name is Just In Case. <laughs> Just in case we have no food. <laughs> That's him. <laughs> uh, we were here, we arrived here in your country last uh, um, May 7, and uh, we'll be going on our first month on June 7, but uh, we're not planning to stay long. We come here for one reason, and uh, I will show it to you later before I preach on the video that we have made. But first and foremost, uh, this guitar is from uh, his brother Chuck. And the necktie he gave me this four years ago. He gave me this necktie. So I'm wearing it and uh, just to in remembrance of, you know, Brother Chuck and uh, his life made an impact. I do believe that uh, he is a great influence and mom, uh, mom there. And uh, so we are so happy to be here and uh, we want to sing some song. And we hope it will be a blessing to all of you. We are not good singers. Uh, we are just obey what the Bible said. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Though sometimes what we make is just noise. <laughs> but anyway, it's a joyful thing. Amen? So, we hope this will be a blessing.
such beauty and splendor eyes have never seen. Jesus, dear sweet face I'll see. I don't have much here, but look what's waiting for me. This other song is uh, one of the favorite songs of Pastor Todd, so we're going to sing it, and uh, it entitles The King and the Beggar. <laughs> I got hospitalized year 2016. Uh, I was diagnosed with so many kinds of physical problems. But God is not done with me yet. And so, uh, uh, that's like what Apostle Paul said, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. And uh, so, uh, uh, that's the greatest, uh, I mean, trials that happened to me. I'll tell it to you later on when I... Uh, Share to you the word of God. You have a Bible, please turn it, open it with me in Psalm 104. Psalm 104, and we have a good news this morning. Very good news. What's the name again? 
Pinky just trusted the Lord this morning. Amen. And uh, I'm so glad. And uh, we were glad to be a part, my wife, to be a part of that. Uh, uh, and you are so blessed, Pinky, to have been, to have a partner that is a Christian. You are so blessed. I would tell you that. You are a, so blessed. No greater blessing than to have a partner who have, who have a heart, you know, and a life that is dedicated to the Lord. So, we praise the Lord for that. Amen. 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 Psalm 104, verse 26, please. I'll just go with this four word. And... Uh, and I will let you go. <laughs> there go the sheep. There go the sheep. There is that Leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein. There goes the sheep. Shall we pray? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. The throne of grace, dear Lord. We are asking for your blessing for us today. Be with us, O oh God. Be our speaker. Please be with me as I give them your word, dear God. Use my life. And I thank you, Lord, for this church. Thank you, Lord, for the pastor and his family. I pray, Lord, that you save more souls and give them what they need, Lord. Just bless them. Be with us today, dear Lord, and we pray this in Christ's name. Amen and amen. If you want to talk to me sometime later on, talk, go to my left side because I cannot hear you from the right side. Uh, uh, I don't have a root canal, everything that's inside my ear, the back of my head. They took it all away. I had a very, very um, difficult situation back then, you know. And uh, uh, so I don't have hearing from this side. One day when I came down to my doctor and visit him for a checkup, there was two men talking with each other. One man told, told his friend, he said, you know, I just got my, my new piece, pair of hearing aids. I just got my new pair of hearing aids today. And uh, I mean, I just got my new pair of hearing aids, and I can hear very loud and clear. And his friend said, well, how much? He told him, just yesterday. <laughs> well, I'm just... Kidding, right? <laughs> Psalm 104, verse 26, it said, there go the sheep. You know, um, uh, the writer of this psalm is appreciating what the Lord, you know, God's been so, so good. You know, he appreciate. He meditate upon God's mighty power. You know, he meditate upon God's mighty power. And uh, 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 he concentrate his life focusing on what God has been doing and you know, what God has been done, you know. And, and, and so it, it came to this one particular verse that caught my attention today. I mean, last night it said, the sh there go the sheep. He's talking about literal sheep that goes to the sea and sail, you know. So I, I made a comparison about the sheep and about our lives as an individual. What is the comparison? I mean, uh, how can we compare and, and that is what I want to talk to you about this morning, about how the ship was being, that sails to the sea, have been compared to our individual life as a Christian or as ordinary people, and especially to all of us that knows the Lord. So bear with me, please, and pray for me as I deliver to you this message. Number one, if I say, Oh, if we say the ships are being compared to our life, number one, the ships are designed or made to go. It is designed to sail on the sea. It is, it is made, you know, they were designed for something, for a very special purpose. Some of the ships are designed to go to battle. You know, use those USS Navy fleet, you know, this, they are warships that we could say. So that is their design. That is their purpose. They were made for that very special purpose, just to go to battle, to go to war, and for, for that. And some ships are made for luxuries. You go there and you, you, you spend a week, you know, going through, 
every destination and you spend your life, you know, in the white beaches, beautiful sand and everything. That is how they are being built, you know, for luxuries. Some ships are made for business. Ships that carry cargoes from place to place. Or some ships are even for transportation, going to some other countries, bringing their, the people to their destination. So, being compared are like, some of the ships are for fishing. They launch out, and the only purpose is to catch fish, you know, and bring them home and sell them, and so on and so forth. But all of these ships are not made for a display only. All of the ships are just, just made for a very special purpose. A purpose that they were designed for. They were not just built just to be seen by man or to be rotten, eaten by rust in the sea. No. Ships are made to go. Just like we are Christians, I would say this this morning, God, Jesus Christ, save us to serve Him. That is our purpose. And like the sheep, we are served, we are, we are saved, I'm sorry, to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. We have only one life. And so soon, it will pass. So the ships are made to go. Not only the ships are made to go, they were made to go, they were made to sail, to do its business, and we were made the same way, my dear brethren, we are made to serve the Lord. We are saved to serve God. Secondly, I would like to tell you that the ship sails. Oh, you would like this. I like this. The ship sails on a different weather. Sometimes it sails on a very smooth, calm sea. But there were times the waves are big. It's rough. We might get sick. It's rough. Not all of the time we sail on this life on what we have been looking, on what we want to be in this life. Not all of us go to the mountaintop of life. You know, we, we, we experience that. But I don't know someone who lives on the mountaintop. It is only a place that we visit most of the time. Most of the time, we are on the valley of life, on the plain. Like this ship that sail on a different weather, sometimes sail. We, as Christians, we, as people, we sometimes sail on the rough and troubled sea. But I forgot to tell you, and I'll tell you this. Sometimes, we face Terrible, big storms in our lives. Storms of any kind. Problem. Everything. Pain. Depression. Financial. Material. Family problem. We go through that troubles. We are not sailing smoothly. Just like what happened to me. I faced a terrible storm in my life, year 2016, when I have a very, very painful pain in my head, at the back of my head, in my inner ear. Blood is coming out from my mouth and my ear, goes, just gushing out, went to the doctor, and they finally found that I am in an emergency situation because the infection inside my head almost got into my brain. I was in very difficult situation that time. My ships are sailing on a very stormy sea. But you know what? I know the master of the sea. I know who holds my life. I know him and I trust him. The doctor told me you need to come back here next Monday so we can, we can have surgery on your head. I told to the doctor, doctor, how much I need to prepare? 
He said, you need to prepare $5,000. $5,000 for one week. Where would I go get that money? Where would I get that money? I don't know anybody. There's no way that I could have that amount of money. But I know someone. My father owned cattle on a thousand hills. And he sold five cattle for me. <laughs> Amen. God made the way when there seems to be no way. He made a way. I was sitting there looking at that beautiful heaven, you know, in that clouds, behind that clouds, beyond that clouds. I saw, I know that there is someone right there that I can trust on about this. Praying that God will give me the $5,000 I need. Just as he is. He is not late. He is always on time. One church from here in your country, send me $3,000. A couple from here in your country, send me $2,000. How much is this? $5,000. God just know what I need. I've been sailing to that rough weather of life. But I just trust God. After my surgery, we went back home after four days. You know, you, you're not supposed to do anything because they open your head. Right? I have these stitches in the back of my head. They go through my brain like this, like a puzzle. I was there in the operating room for 10 hours. My, my wife don't know what to do. Just go up and down, up and down, up and down. Talk to the doctor, go up and down. What's happening here? Is he dead? <laughs> so, finally after 10 hours, I was made it back to my room. After four days, I was not supposed to do anything. But you know, I preached with a bandage on my head. And I just cried and cried because God has been so good to me. Yes. Appreciate life. Yes. He spared my life. Yes. Now I'm still here. I'm still preaching God's word. You, we have only one life. Though we are sailing to that stormy sea, like that ship, that sails in a different weather. You might be in a storm right now. You might be having some trouble and problem right now. But there is someone I know who can help you. Trust God. He alone can help you. The last thing I want you to know. When the ship sail, I told you this before it sails on business you know it has a lot of business one business of ships are bringing people into their destination that's that is what my wife did this morning to bring someone to a destination that is our business as a church Whatever hardship we may go through, we have only one business, to bring people to Christ. Last, and I'll be done. You know this, when ship sail, it sail and it soon disappear from view. Right? From the moment it started on, start sailing, it was a huge, big ship. And then time just passes by, you can see, just getting smaller, smaller, and smaller. And soon, it's just a speck in the sea. And soon, you cannot see it anymore. 
That is our life. We will soon be out of this world. We will soon disappear from the view. You have trusted Christ in your, as your Savior. Don't worry. You have a better home in heaven. Amen. Just like the song goes, my favorite. Only one life. So soon it will pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. My dear friends, soon enough, we'll be out of this world. Just like our life. We are here today, strong, energetic, healthy, we are able. But soon, we don't know when. We don't know what, happened, what will happen tomorrow. The only thing we know is we know who holds tomorrow. We have only one life. And only what's done for Christ will last. When you disappear from view, what could you say? You know, when you got that beautiful heaven, the Lord will not say how much money you have in the bank, no. How intelligent you are, no. Those are nothing. The goals we are seeking for in this world, we will just step on it when we are in that beautiful heaven. Yes. The emeralds, the diamonds, we've been looking for and putting into our rings, earrings and everything. They are just a design on that wall. You will just see those beautiful stones. But just like I told you, only what's done for Christ will last. I will end in this little story about a young boy who is 11 years old and his dad, the pastor of the church. Every Sunday afternoon, this young boy, 11 years old, and his dad as a pastor will go and visit. Every Sunday afternoon, about 3 o'clock, they will go out. And they will hand out gospel tracts to everyone, you know. And they will knock on doors. In this particular Sunday, it's very cold. Very cold. And the rain just pouring rain, you know. And, and that boy, he put on his boots and his, you know, the most thickest, maybe, waterproof. And uh, he goes to his dad, dad, I'm ready. He said, ready for what? Well, Dad, ain't we going to hand it trucks today? He said, oh, my son. He said, I'm not going out in this weather. It's cold and it's pouring rain. You know what the boy said? He said, Dad, well, ain't people going to hell when it's raining? Dad, please. Let me go. Please. His dad said, okay, just go. Be careful. And then he got this gospel truck and went one. Every house that he could, he knocked on them. Handed out gospel trucks. He had only one left. Just one. And he was ready to go home. And he knocked on the door of this one lonely house. No one is answering. Nobody. And he kept on knocking. Doorbell. Ding, ding, knock. Doorbell, knock. Until about 15 minutes. He wanted to leave, but there is something that is stopping him leaving that house. So he came back and started knocking. <laughs> Loud knock. Then this old elderly woman came down, opened the door, and he has, in his most beautiful smile, greeted that old lady, said, Ma'am, I came here to tell you 
that Jesus loves you so much. And you can find it in these gospel tracts. So he gave it to her, went by own, his own, go back to their, their home. That Sunday morning came, the pastor in the pulpit, his dad, before the start of the service, as if there is some testimony before we proceed to our gasp, to our service, an old elderly woman stood up from the back seat and he started saying, you don't know me, I don't know you, I'm just new in your church, this is my first time, but I would like to tell you a story. I was about to take my, my life away. My husband just died two weeks ago. And I am so lonely. I love him so much. And I am so lonely. During that particular day when it's very cold and the rain is pouring, I'm on the attic of our house. I have a rope in my neck. And I was about to commit suicide. Until I heard a loud knock on my door. And I said, who is going to come and visit me? And I don't know someone that would do that. Oh, I said, she said, I will just, maybe she will, that will go away. But the knock on door keep on and skipping and getting louder and louder and louder. So he said, finally, he just took up that rope. She, she came down from there, go down, open the door, and she saw the very beautiful smile, the young boy. I came in. I read that gospel tract. That's why I'm here today. Because I got saved and I trusted the Lord. Amen. I went back in the attic, took that chair out, the rope out, because I don't need them anymore. Amen. Your life can make a difference. Yes, sir. Only, preacher, be available for God. My dear friends, we are asking for your prayers. If you could help us. We want to go home as soon as we can. We just want to put up a church building in that place. As you see, we need to start early in the morning because when the sun rises up, we have no cover. We have to bring our own chairs. So if you would pray for us, or maybe you could help us. We would appreciate so much. Your life can make a difference. Thank you, Pastor. God bless. Matter so little, what you may know, place as you be, all the people you know, for it all comes to nothing, and place as Just memories to keep. Only one life, so soon it will pass. Only what that for Christ will last. Only one chance to do this. life.